Who do you think you are? This is the most important question that you can answer because who you think you are defines how you live your life. Many of us have no idea who we are because we've inherited hand-me-down beliefs, adopting others' ideas about who we should be. And if those beliefs weren't rooted in love, they became the fears that taught you it's not safe to be yourself. So you must take someone else's voice as your own voice. And you created a small self so you could fit in. But as adults, this small self manifests as imposter syndrome, perfectionism, and all kinds of fears that keep us stuck and paralyzed. My own childhood had me feeling tremendous unworthiness and fear of my own power. So I gave my power away. And for years, I hurt and disappointed myself so that others couldn't. Those were my deepest fears. And I became the one who manifested them. Thankfully, though, we have something inside of us that drives us to seek expansion and growth and transformation. And there's a multi-billion dollar industry built on all of this seeking. But what I've come to realize in my own healing journey and in working with others is that we are all seeking the same thing. And that's the authentic self that we weren't allowed to be. Healing is the journey back to our own authentic expression. Encoded within every living thing as a divine intelligence that urges it to become the fullest expression of itself. The life force energy that drives the flower to bloom and be beautiful is the same energy in us urging our own magnificence, expression, and coming into our potential of who we are. Taking this journey, though, will lead you to the edge of yourself where you start bumping up against the known that no longer serves you and the unknown that's waiting to be discovered. It takes so much courage to go against your conditioning and become who you were meant to be. But doing anything less drains and sucks your life force energy. So I ask you again, who do you think you are? And I want to invite you into a simple practice that you can utilize anytime, anywhere to get in touch with your authentic, true self. So you sit comfortably wherever you are right now with your feet firmly on the ground. And you say, I connect myself to the healing center of Mother Earth and feel the energy of the planet coming up through your feet as you bend over and you can scoop with your hands. I like to scoop and inhale and pull that energy up. And as you raise your hands above your body, open your hand, your fingers as wide as you can, like a tree, as you extend over your head and you say, I connect myself to the healing light of the creator. And as you take another breath in, inhale, pull that energy down through your crown, through your spine, into your body and say, I now connect to my deep self. And find that spot where you feel that deep self to be. And from this place, anytime that you come up to that place where you're bumping up against the known that no longer serves and the unknown that doesn't or the unknown that you don't know about this is an invitation to sound out that energy because there is a quote in healing circles and trauma circles that says our nervous system will always choose a familiar hell over an unfamiliar heaven so we are the ones who have to do the work to become a safe space for ourselves, inside of ourselves, knowing that we can trust ourselves, knowing that we can be in integrity, knowing that we aren't going to hurt and disappoint ourselves so that others can't, knowing that we aren't going to manifest chaos because we know how to manage it so well, 
knowing that we are going to step out of these dramatic, chaotic relationships that are one-sided, that don't serve you, that don't serve either of your growth. Knowing that you're capable of making these big, radical transformations. Anytime you have that invitation and your own life reveals for you what's next, your own life reveals where to do the work, the struggle, the struggle itself is the path. <laughs> the struggle itself is the invitation. Those things that you're struggling with are your growth edge. That's where the bumping up is occurring. And so rather than reacting to it, telling it a story, wrestling with it, instead, just sound it out. You could just tune into that place in the body. And like, for instance, let's just sound out fear, stagnation, you're stuck. Come into that true self part of you and ask your body, what sound needs to be released? Because you could think of sound as being a vibrational packet of information that is stuck in stored energy inside of your body because the body is the unconscious mind. And so we've got all these emotional and traumatic imprints inside of us. And we know that when a trigger happens, when that known that no longer serves gets triggered, what that is, is it's a resonant vibration that's going off inside of you. It's like two tuning forks. One is setting off the vibration of the other. And that's what happens inside of our nervous system. And it communicates, the stored vibrations communicate the reverse way, the vagus nerve through the body up and into the brain. And before you know it, you're in reaction. You're in fight, flight, freeze, whatever it is that your coping mechanism is. And we send, we go right into habit mind. We go right into our addictions. We go right into our numbing. We go right into our distractions. We go right into anywhere but present with what's here. And the, the coping with it, our coping mechanisms are putting band-aids over the real issue because the issue is in the tissue. And so that invitation is to sound it out, to vibrate it out with your body, with your voice and having the courage to do it. And this is how we use our voice as an instrument for healing. So let's just try it real quick. Let's go in and feel where there's fear. So connecting again with my deep self, I know right where that is. I feel it. And I'm going to feel, think of something that I'm struggling with right now. And I'm going to bring it into mind and I'm just going to sound it out. Oh, ah, ah. And I can feel inside of me how that stirred up energy inside of me. There is no wrong way to sound. There is no wrong way to do this work. And that's what's so beautiful and so freeing about it. So authentic about it. It's your authentic expression in the exact now moment in the present moment. And so when you use your voice that way to sound it out, and keep sounding it, keep sounding it, keep sounding it as much as it needs to come out. And I've done this work so often. Sometimes that sound turns into a sob. Sometimes that sound turns into a scream. It just depends on the energy and what's lying there underneath it. Sometimes beneath the, um, the anger or the fear that I'm feeling underneath that is this feeling of being trapped and just that feeling of rage of being trapped inside my body, inside of my own experience and nowhere to go. That feeling as a little girl can come up and I can just scream that rage out of my body without telling myself a story about it. Sobbing, same thing. I've had that experience where I was just sounding it out and all of a sudden it's just emotional, emotion that wants to come up and out. And the important thing is to do it without the story. It's to do it without the story. And just sound it out until those sounds become soothing sounds. So they eventually transition from those jarring <laughs> sounds into self-soothing sounds that come into like, ah, oh, hmm. Hmm. Oh. And just the self-love that you can offer yourself to soothe yourself. This is how you become a safe space for yourself. And it's through doing this work 
that we are reclaiming our true nature, that we are re-identifying who we want to be, that we are taking up responsibility for who we are and how we show up and who we want to be in the world. We're asking, who's the authentic self? Who's the true me that's in here? And my thoughts around that are they stem from December 6, 2021, when I had an out-of-body experience, when my consciousness, um, I was very intoxicated on this particular day, went to brunch with a group of friends, and we drank all day on this beautiful Sunday on a patio with music all day and uh, just drinking and, and carousing all day long. And in the evening, I was very intoxicated. And all of a sudden, my consciousness flew up and out of my body. And I saw my body sitting there and I saw everybody who was around me. And instead of just seeing with my human eyes, I saw with different eyes because I could see the wounding, the pain, the stories, the traumas, the everything being acted out through this hedonistic escapist behavior of drinking and numbing ourselves with strangers, right? right? We're all on the same page. We're all here together. We're all agreeing to this collective delusion that we're all participating in right now, calling it a good time. So my conscious went up and out and it observed with zero judgment. It was just a witnessing observation with zero judgment. And I looked down at myself and the question dropped in and it said, what vibration of consciousness do you want animating your body? And then I popped back into my body, got into an Uber and went home. Today, as I'm recording this, I am on my 141st day of not drinking alcohol. I've stopped drinking because it sometimes would creep in like that. I, it's like this uh, feeling would take over. And the best description I've ever read was from F. Scott Fitzgerald. And he said, I take the first drink, the drink takes the second drink, and then the drink takes me. And sometimes that would happen to me. So I just decided to not invite the devil to the dance floor anymore. So back to consciousness here. So with that question, what vibration of consciousness do you want animating your body? I've gone to work to answer that question. And I'm coming up here on three years ago now, that was 2021, where I'm in November or October of 2024 right now. So it's been a journey to answer this question. And in this journey of answering this question, what I've come to realize now, almost three years later, is that this body is an instrument it's an instrument of the divine that the vibration of consciousness I want animating my body is the highest bandwidth, the highest frequency of source creator. So if we think of God, instead of a person with a beard, with a, a stick and a book, and he's judging you and writing down every little thing you've done. And we take the personification away from source and we look at it as a vast field of infinite intelligence that comes in a variety of frequencies that we can choose the level of frequency that operates our consciousness, that every cell of our body literally has an antenna on it. Our hair is an antenna that we literally are frequency devices. And so we pick up a vibration of consciousness that animates our body and uses this body as the divine instrument that it is. And as a sound healer, this is what I've come to recognize and realize is that the first instrument that gets played in any sound bath that I do is me and who's playing the instrument. And that's the work that I'm stepping into now in 2025 in really wanting to work with people who are called to do sound, to become the instruments of the divine to become the transmitters of this frequency of the divine that comes through, flows through you, through me and me as me for the benefit of others, right? So we, our body, we ourselves are the first instrument that gets played. Your voice is your connection to the divine. It's you as the divine expressing yourself. Your voice is a connection of spirit and body coming out in a vibration, coming out in a voice. It's really profound when you think about it. Communication. So making of ourself an instrument and the Buddha's last words, make of yourself a light, same thing. We're music made of light. We are light frozen in a body. 
emanating a frequency. And so as we elevate and transform our frequency, a different level of consciousness literally taps in, tunes in and flows through us. Our ideas change, our self-talk changes, our perception changes, the way we see other people changes, everything changes. And once the inside changes, the outside world begins to align to match the inside frequency because everything is vibrational and everything comes into resonance and entrainment with something. Something's always in training, right? And so we want to become the field that entrains the fields around us in my own home, in my sanctuary, that it reflects my inside. It reflects this vibration of consciousness that comes through me, that seeks the sacred in everyday living, that seeks the sacred in every day. And so that's the work. It's how do I maintain the sacred feeling that I have when I'm singing and chanting, that I have when I'm at my altar meditating into when I go to Target and I deal with the cranky lady at the checkout aisle. I look through my eyes as the divine into her as the divine. And that frequency, that vibration triggers a vibrational frequency in others. Now, not everyone's going to respond to you in an excited and loving way because not everybody wants to be on that frequency level. Some people enjoy it down here and that's where they're at. And you're going to trigger the hell out of them, literally. <laughs> so your work is to maintain your frequency so that it doesn't get jostled and bothered because you're an instrument of the divine. So with that, let's do a little sound healing here. I recorded a whole sound thing and forgot to turn my uh, sound for musicians on my Zoom. So as I was editing my video, it's all just mute. So that's perfectly fine because now I get to do it again. So let's drop in together, shall we? All right. Ah. <sighs> Hmm. I call upon the Hathors, Goddess Isis, the Magdalene frequency, that the sound that comes through me entrains only the highest good of you, the listener, that the sound of the light, the sound of the divine, the frequency of the divine is transmitted through this instrument to your instrument to trigger the vibrational resonance and remembrance that you are light, that you are a one of a kind, unique divine expression of the source creator who does not create duplicates and only creates originals. And I just wanted to add also that, um, in finding out who we are and answering that question, who am I? The answer is energy. <laughs> the answer is I'm an instrument of the divine source creator and your body vehicle, your instrument is unique to you. It has its own timber, it has its own pitch, it has its own everything, it has its own frequency. And we, our divine template, our gene keys, is literally the divine blueprint, the divine template of our instrument. And when you go through the gene keys, there's actually a rhythm, a rhythmic pattern that can be discerned from your line expression, from the I Ching, um, which there's drumming rhythms in the I Ching. So when you map out your gene keys, you can actually map out your own rhythmic expression of who you are. And when you sing it, in conjunction with with the city state or the city enlightened states of being you're encoding your body and i really look at that you know everything that you declare everything that you claim everything that you say becomes an initiation everything that you're not yet right the, the space between declaring it and becoming it is the whole process of initiation and initiation is the process of becoming. So then you reach that new state of being, you reach that new normal, that new level of who you are, and there's always a higher level of ascension. That's the beauty of ascension is that it's an ongoing process. So I'm gonna find my Gene Keys drumming chart. 
right, so I will share my screen so you can actually see what I'm doing because I create these for other people. All right, so these are the ex lines of my expression, and to show you what I'm talking about, there are these lines, six, six, one, three, one, four, six, two. So these are the lines of expression within your gene keys. Okay, so then I'm gonna drum my gene keys so you can hear what this sounds like and really how powerful this is. So with the gene keys, uh, with the I Ching, you read them from the bottom up. So the open represents two, two beats, and then the closed is one beat. So the sound of this one, which is presence, is this one. Got it? So when I play the whole song, it goes like this. which are so that's my whole gene keys uh, song and when I sing it with my word with the words it goes like this so we're gonna start with tuning into our drum first I always begin with a simple heartbeat with my drum and now we're gonna sing the gene keys and they go like this I am presence I am majesty, I am freedom, I am transparency, I am rebirth, I am silence, I am sacrifice, I am sanctity, I'm invisible. I am majesty, I am majesty, and then I play my whole rhythm. So I take all of those gene keys as a whole, and that's how I go about drumming and singing my gene keys. Okay, so let's turn that off. Stop sharing. So that's one of my favorite ways to chant is in my daily practice is chanting my gene keys because it's an initiation process that awakens me to the truth of who I am. And now I'm gonna turn into the Hathors for a little musical journey.
going to invite you to use your voice to hum with me. So let's just get a little hum going here. The time has come to reclaim your worthiness, your sovereignty, your light, and to release all of those stories, definitions, um, beliefs, and conditioning that was put on you by other people. And I know it can be a lot, you know, for me, I'm a nine on the aces, which I have freely shared. I have my talk on here. I've got my talks out there about growing up abused and surviving my teenage years as a teenage runaway, surviving a suicide attempt in which I was gifted hearing the most beautiful music made of light and knowing now later in life that that was a, a preview of what was to come. It was a preview of my holy purpose here. So you too have multiple purposes. We all have the same purpose and that's to wake up and express ourselves in the fullness of our divinity. Just like the flower blooms because it has to. We bloom because we have to. I invite you to, you can go to vibology.com and take your free a free quiz that will tell you based on your birthday, your Chaldean numerology, which is such a great place to start that gives you your, your birth role, which is in alignment with the Tarot. It's one of the oldest systems in the world that tells us who we are and what we're here for. And then of course I do uh, readings based on your gene keys, create your drumming for you and have all I will be uploading and I'll be uploading all. And I, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> And I will be uploading all kinds of self-guided tours, <laughs> meditations, and embodied dance processes, along with talks for you to begin to heal the body, this, this body storage capacity, this storage device that took on traumas, emotions, stories, beliefs, all the unconscious energy just stored in this body can be freed and cleared and released through your own voice and step into the magnificence of who you are, this fearless expression of your highest animation of consciousness, which of course is Christ consciousness, this Christed being. To be a Christed being means to awaken to the light that you are, to awaken to your divinity, to awaken to your sanctity, to awaken to your own holiness, and know that when you do that work to step into that frequency of becoming and you start aligning your life, your actions, your words, your thoughts, your feelings, everything comes into alignment now with that one true being. This is the way. This is what it means to cultivate the way and to walk the way. And your way is your way because you're so 100% unique that nobody can tell you which way you should go. Nobody can tell you which decisions you should make. There's a big dragonfly flying around my yard right now. <laughs> 
because we are unique, the work is to is to recalibrate, retune ourselves to the frequency of our own divine nature so that we can trust ourselves to move in the present moment in a way that aligns with the truth, the truest truth of who we are in every moment by moment by moment. And life really slows down when you begin to live this way, when you get to this edge of of uh, I call it the razor's edge of the present moment where you know that the present moment you're noticing is the moment that's already passed. And so you get into this silent space of just expansiveness. And that's the present moment. It's this, it's this expansive space that doesn't have words yet. It's just vibrational because it's the utter space of flow. It's the utter space of creation. And this is where we are meant to live all the time. And when we do this in tune and tuned into our, our, our divinity and our highest frequency of being, then we become creators. We are, we become the creators we're meant to be in everything that we're doing. And it doesn't even have to be some big, uh, extravagance. This is just in the mundane. We find the sacred in the, in the mundane because when you come into this frequency of realization, you realize that the time spent in a body, there is no mundane time spent in the body. Everything is miracle. Everything is brought into the present to be felt and fully experienced through all of this sensory apparatus called your body. It's really, um, it's a really a transformational way of living. And when you come into these higher frequencies, right, these higher vibrational frequencies of the divine, the divine seeks expansion, the divine seeks life, the divine seeks creation. It does not seek destruction. Destruction is not of this high frequency. So in order to transform the world, which is in the process of transforming right now, and to take part in that transformation of the world, we transform our being. So we go out in the world as a transformed being and our light lights the light in others. It's that simple. It's really powerful using your voice. So I so invite you to come and use your voice with me, come to a class with me if you're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the studio. And I'm also gonna start putting more of these online in 2025. I have two programs I'm launching in 2025. One is the Sound Priestess Academy, which not only does he want to teach the fundamentals of sound, the science of sound, the instruments of sound, but also the sanctity of sound and how to make yourself the first instrument because our intentionality gets imprinted into every sound bath that we do. And so to set yourself apart is to really become a sonic ceremonialist. You're not just playing bowls for the fun of it. This is really intentional. And so I'm going to be launching the Sound Priestess Academy. And the second thing that I'm launching in 2025 is a program called Divinely You. And we're going to go each month, 11 months, we're going to take this the next 11 months of the year to go through each sphere of the gene keys and explore it through the lens of your own gene key, creating art around that gene key through the art journaling process, coupled with sound. I am. So I'm singing, I am presence. And so with our practices um, in the divinely you program, we'll be chanting, but also embodiment so that over the course of the year, you really do the work of deep presence, deep transformation, turning yourself, if you will, into the magnificent, beautiful divine being that you are. And we can do this together in community and in a group with support. So there'll be more about that on my website. But if you're interested in any of these things, I invite you to, number one, go take your free assessment about your sacred path and get on my emailing list. And I will let you know as soon as the Sonic Priestess Academy launches and the Divinely You program is open for 
um, signups. And I just, I can't wait to go on these journeys with you in 2025. 2025 is going to be so powerful. 2024 has been bringing things to light and making them easier to shed. And 2025 is now going to be about embodiment, 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 embodiment. And I can't wait to help you embody your authentic being and your authentic voice so you can shine all of your light on the world because we need it now more than ever. Bye. See you soon.